Aloha and welcome. Welcome to Global Connections. I'm your host, Carlos Juarez, and joining me today, I've got two young leaders that are going to share a little bit of insight about their experience studying abroad at the moment. Uh, I have with me on my immediate left, Brooke Barber. Brooke is coming to us from, well, she's from Falls Church, Virginia, a student at George Mason University, uh, and uh, together with Haley Seeger. Haley is from Northern California, Walnut Creek, and she's a student at Edinburgh University in Scotland. But today, both of them are joining me here in San Andres Cholula, Puebla, in Mexico, where they are both students studying at the University of the Americas here in Puebla. Uh, welcome to the show, and thank you for joining me here, Brooke and Haley. Thank you. Well, uh, you know, we, we want to take an opportunity because of both of you, I want to first thank you for, you know, just being bold enough to leave your comfort zone, to get out of what, you know, might typically be, uh, you know, just staying in, in either your home country or your home institution. And you've taken the big adventure to, to head off and study abroad and live abroad. And so what we want to do is kind of reflect on that a little bit, some of the challenges, some of the issues. And I always like to say when you have these opportunities to study or live or work abroad, it, it changes you. You're never the same person. Uh, but before we jump into some of that, let me just ask you, each of you to give us a few words about yourself. I mean, I, uh, starting with you, Brooke, uh, you come to us from Virginia, uh, and both of you are now here in your second semester. You, you arrived last fall, so you've had a full semester. Now you're in number two, getting close to about halfway. Tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe what motivated you to take the study abroad. Um, well, I'm from like really close to Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. so politics are like really prevalent and relevant in that yes. area. So, of course, I studied government and international, international relations mm -hmm. there. So studying abroad is kind of like an important part of that, sure. I feel like. Sure, yeah, a good fit. Um, and I feel like I've had kind of a different experience because um, I feel like a lot of international students, they choose where they're going to study abroad based on you know, wanting to experience something new, but beforehand I've actually been here in mm. Tepebla and oh, I really yeah. liked it and so I just wanted to come and actually experience it for like a long period of time. Excellent. And so you had a short visit before, just was it by chance or because you had some connection or how, um, how did you end up visiting? I've been here a couple of times mm. because my boyfriend of two and a half years, um, his grandparents are from here. Oh, okay. So, oh, so there was a, a link of connection. Yeah. And then suddenly it opened up that, hey, well, there's a place I could actually go for a longer stay and actually exactly. continue my studies. So in some ways you came back. Yeah. And, and that's different. Sometimes when you go study abroad, you might go to a place you've never been to. It's a whole new experience. Exactly. And you saw it in a brochure or somebody described it. You came back having seen it, but obviously a different experience to come as a tourist right. as it is. Uh, and we'll talk about that, what it's been like for you to assimilate it just to be a, a part of the community here because that's mm -hmm. really what you are. And Haley, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're, you're a Cali girl from Northern California, mm -hmm. uh, but you're also, you've got this other peculiar. You actually study in Scotland in the United yeah. Kingdom. So tell us a little bit about your background and, and how did you end up now in Mexico? Not quite California, but you know, uh, California was once Mexico. So yes. you're closer <laughs> to home than, than, than being in Scotland. Yeah, um, I originally chose Scotland because I wanted to get like an international perspective since I mm -hmm. study international relations. and I still wanted to go on a year abroad, even though some people thought that was kind of weird since I'm already abroad. Mm -hmm. um, and I chose Mexico because being from California, I've kind of been exposed to parts of Mexican mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to know more about it. And I've been studying Spanish since middle school. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I'd continue yeah. learning it and experiencing it. And especially like, yeah, being from California in the U.S., getting a different perspective of Mexico, like the real perspective sure. of Mexico. Yeah, and of course you say that because even in the outskirts of D.C., all the major urban centers of the U.S., we have a large population of Mexicans. But the reality is today, Mexican immigrants are everywhere. They're in the Carolinas, the Dakotas, mm -hmm. the Midwest, you know, meatpacking plants of Kansas. Mexicans are everywhere. Of course, California, Mexicans all know, used to be part of, uh, yeah. of, of Mexico. Uh, Americans sometimes don't realize it was, you know, a, a large uh, land transfer in the mid 19th century. Uh, but that aside, also you grew up, uh, you know, exposed to it, but also learning some Spanish. But now, a big difference to be here and have to use it in your daily life. And so, I'd like to maybe have uh, have you both share just some of the impressions. Like when you first came, you had an idea you had been here. Had you been to Mexico much yourself? Uh, no, not at all, maybe. And so, for you, you had some images, some ideas, and then suddenly you came to the reality, and maybe. Uh, first, tell us, uh, Brooke, yourself, I mean, once you had been here before, but now you came in a different capacity, what were some of the impressions or, I don't know, challenges when you first arrived? Um, I think it's just different coming on, like, vacation versus coming to live, mm -hmm. because even though, um, you know, you're exposed to the culture when you come on vacation, it's more, 
when you have to live here alone, you have to do things for yourself, you have responsibilities, and you have to really put yourself out there, even if you're uncomfortable. Whereas, for example, when I would come on vacation, I had like a family that would like do things for me and explain mm -hmm. things to me. Yes, so. Yes. so you have to solve a lot of basic right. things yourself uh, and you know ask questions or just figure it out. Uh, and that, that's different from vacation, you're in a different mentality, right? Exactly. Here you're actually having to live and then shop and, and decide, uh, <laughs> you know, basic basic needs that are quite different. Uh, tell us yourself uh, some of your experience, Haley, about uh, you know maybe impressions or stereotypes or images you had of Mexico, as you, maybe you shared with your family or friends. Hey, I'm going to go study in Mexico, and mm -hmm. you know what you expected, what they expected, and then what you actually found. What was it like? I was one thing I was really nervous about was just kind of the perception of being an American in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, during kind of like a hard time because I've gotten kind of a hard time about it sometimes of being in Scotland and so I expected it to be a lot worse when I came here but I it was the complete opposite everybody was everybody was excited when I say I'm from the U.S. especially from California because they have family there they've been there <laughs> yeah. and, um, before I left um, my co-workers I had met some Mexican co-workers that were telling me about it and really excited for me to come so they just got me more excited so it was like mm -hmm. Both, kind of, both ends of the spectrum, sure. nervous and excited, and it's been better than I expected. Yeah, and I think often, you know, because those of us, uh, if you look at the headlines or see things happening in different parts of the world, sometimes the news only covers, I don't know, the sensational news, the drama, and there's no question Mexico is a country that has a lot of challenges. There, are, you, you have to be careful even here as a visiting, you know, international student, where you're going, who you're with, uh, use, you know, good judgment. The same as if you were any big major city, of course, but especially given some of the you know insecurity issues. But that aside, really what I want to get at here is that often I think people are surprised that Mexico is a place where most people have normal lives, if we want to call that, or they have uh, basically uh, you know a lot of, uh, well, even exciting and, and dynamic and you know, rich culture and things that, uh, you know, it's not a dull or, or boring uh, experience. There's always things happening and uh, particularly the rich diversity of the culture here, and, and even the regionalism. You're here in a provincial city in Mexico, different from the big mega, you know, Mexico mm -hmm. City, uh, which is nearby. Um, maybe t t tell me a little about uh, some of the challenges when you first arrived, things that were, you know, difficult to figure out, so that you wish, you know, in retrospect, you knew or you had some better idea. Uh, and then maybe similarly, if there are things that you expected to be tough, but turned out to be, I don't know, a lot easier than expected. Anything come to mind? Um, one thing that's definitely, it's not an issue, but it's just funny, is that in America, everyone kind of runs on a schedule, and it's <laughs> especially in, like, cities and, like, in the metro area and stuff, it's very, like, structured. And here, when I would be on vacation and things, like, that doesn't really matter. Sure. We, you appreciate that there's not really, like, Yeah, it's a vacation time. But when you come here and you have, like, responsibilities and you have homework and you have things to do, you really learn to appreciate, like, that structure that we have there. Yeah, yeah. For example, like a week ago, I didn't have Wi-Fi in my apartment and I told the maintenance guy like, and when it happened, you know, I need Wi-Fi. And he was like, okay, like right now I'll bring it, or I'll like help you fix it. And like a week and a half later, he was like, okay, like right now I'm coming up. And I was like, what are you talking about? I already fixed it. Yeah, <laughs> so. Yeah. so the concepts of time or even the sort of structure of, of managing that time are uh, very, more elastic and flexible here. And it works great at some level, maybe, but also it's the kind of thing in when we learn about cross-cultural relations, how to deal with these differences, you want to sort of anticipate that and understand it. And then, you know, we often hear, uh, you know, a phrase used in Mexico, ya merito, or, or just a little minute, and that minute can be three days or, or you know, hours. And, you know, you just want to, at some point, understand what that really means. And if it is important, you've got to follow through, you got to be on them more. Uh, otherwise, you have to relax your own expectations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, anything you could share, Haley? Again, uh, the things that surprised you, challenges, issues? Yeah, definitely the, the time thing has been hard, especially as somebody who likes to have everything planned out really well and scheduled. Like, after this, I'm going to the grocery store and, like, I'm meeting my friend at the bus stop at four, but that definitely does not mean we're <laughs> It may not be 4000, yeah. yes. <laughs> Um, and the bus definitely does not come every 20 minutes like it's supposed to. Oh, no, the schedule um, says, but, yeah. but maybe not. Yes. <laughs> but no. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess the only other thing that's been a consistent challenge or something that I don't like is paying for water, <laughs> which is, seems kind of 
trivial, but yeah, yeah. and it, it really is, but yeah, it's just and it, it is one of those sort of first world problems. You assume exactly. water everywhere you turn on, you can drink, and here you want to be careful. I mean, especially someone who might be coming from outside, or maybe your stomach is not quite used to the challenges here. Uh, and that's true of traveling to many places. You always want to be on the safe side. But yeah, having to pay then for everything uh, can every time you drink some water. Uh, and you know, as you probably well know, Mexico has perhaps one of the indeed the highest per capita consumption of, of soft drinks, of sodas. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe that is reflected in that there's not as much abundant water available everywhere. So a soda can be a quicker or a beer in many cases, <laughs> an easier option. Now, one of the things, and in, in, uh, as we continue our dialogue, I mean, you've come at a time now, here we are in 2019, uh, we've had now two, a little over two years of the new administration of President Donald Trump. Of course, uh, as he campaigned for office, uh, in fact, he didn't know he was going to be president, but at the time he had a rather, you know, a lot of negative things to say about Mexico and, and, and the relations have been soured quite a bit. But more to the point, here you are, uh, students from the United States studying here, and, you know, right, like it or not, you are cultural ambassadors. You represent that country, and when you meet people, uh, you know, they may have questions and puzzles and, and you know, you have to try to, you know, you, part of your role as a cultural ambassador is helping them understand more about your home country, uh, including peculiarities of politics and, and, and the puzzles of that. Um, have you had opportunities, I don't know, questions, awkward moments or, or, you know, any times where you had to try to explain what's going on back home? And both of you, you're students of politics and government and international relations, so uh, you're in a better capacity than maybe a nursing student or someone else. Nevertheless, talk a little bit about, I mean, what it means to be an American in Mexico here in 2019 or in the last year, the time you've been here. Um, I think it's been interesting every time someone finds, well, not every time, but often when people find out that you're American, they always want to ask you what you think of Trump. And I always just say, like, I don't think that I would be interested in necessarily in studying abroad here for a whole year if I was that big of a fan of Donald Trump and the things that he says about Mexico. So that's been interesting. But more than that, I think, um, when people find out that you're American, even more than politics, they're always interested in the language and they always want to speak to you in English mm -hmm. and try to like mm -hmm. make that cultural sure. connection. So yeah, yeah. that's really interesting. And I mean, here, especially at the university, I mean, by and large, this is a very international oriented institution and the students, particularly those like you studying international relations, they, they have a good working knowledge of English. So mm -hmm. for them, it's an opportunity to kind of perfect it a little bit, practice it, uh, improve it. Uh, and so there's a certain excitement about that. Moreover, and, and you know, your peers here, the students, they have a lot of experience traveling. Many of them have been to the US or to Europe, other places. And uh, so they're pretty familiar with these issues. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, one of the differences about studying abroad, not only are you in the classroom with your peers, but you're actually living here and dealing with the local community and everything that entails. Um, you know, as we continue, uh, I want to take a short break in a moment here. Uh, and as we come back, just talk a little bit about, again, what are some of the things that you had to do it again or, or, or otherwise provide some tips and advice to others who are about to embark on a new journey, traveling, living, studying, working abroad. What are the kind of things, you know, that you would put on your little, you know, checklist that, you know, many of them you may have done already, you're organized, you're structured, but there are certain, there's always things that you kind of, oh, if I had only known or if I had done this. But we'll come back after a short break to talk a little bit more about this experience. Uh, uh, I'm delighted that you're sharing these. And I, again, I want to thank you both for this bold decision to get out of your comfort zone, get in to see the world. Uh, and as a final reflection, we'll talk a little bit about how this experience has changed you as individuals, because uh, these are life-changing experiences. We'll never quite go back to the same. Uh, it'll open up new connections, but even a new way of thinking. So as we come back, we're going to take a short break right now. We're here on Global Connections. I'm your host, Carlos Juarez. I'm joined today by two young leaders, uh, American students that are studying here in Mexico, uh, Brooke Barber from George Mason University in Virginia, and Haley Zeger, who's from, uh, from California, but she's studying abroad in Scotland, and she's studying abroad from there in Mexico. So that complicates things even more. But uh, join us for more on the story as we come right back in a short break. Thank you. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. 
My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back. I'm your host here, Carlos Juarez, back on Global Connections, and joined today by Haley Barber from Virginia and Brooke Bar <laughs> Haley Zeger, I'm sorry, from California, and Brooke, Brooke Barber from Virginia, but both of them are students studying abroad in Mexico at the moment. Uh, and uh, of course, these are experiences that are so important, uh, especially to help us understand how to function in the world today, how to develop important cross-cultural relations, uh, uh, even just adaptability skills, because we live in this age of a lot of interconnections, global links, and you know that's what we're here talking about. Uh, but also the idea that uh, you know you you know in preparing to come here, you obviously had some images, some ideas, some checklists, some things that you decided. Uh, you know, Brooke, you had already come, so you had maybe a slight advantage, or at least having been to Mexico. Uh, in your case, uh, Haley, you you know you were far off in Europe, and you're on your way to Mexico, so you did a little research and reading. What do I do? And I wonder maybe if you can share. Um, I mean, things that you are glad that you brought with you whatever it might have been little goodies or things or were there any things that you wish you had prepared a little better or maybe things that you had wish you had brought with you but didn't uh, anything come to mind or, or everything worked out you came and planned it and everything's been peachy keen. so far everything's <laughs> been good and, and, and you know again we're talking about we're not in like madagascar or some place where you don't have access to I mean, mexico is a pretty a well integrated place and, and you can find most of your needs in general mm -hmm. uh, but i guess i'm just thinking more about that the task of, you know all, many of us like to travel and go and see the world uh, i'm certainly a global traveler myself i find the more i travel the less i need and the the lighter i like to travel because you know we often have this image of you gotta have this gotta have the hair blow dryer you need this and in the end no it's sometimes better to go simple and just keep it simpler uh, any reflections on that or I live alone in an apartment, so I had to come here. Obviously, I didn't like, yeah. pack up all my blankets. Yeah, and, like, but you had things. to set it all up. Yeah. So I had to like buy all those things. So now coming back home soon, it's kind of an well, issue because yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with all exactly. those things. So it's funny you have to learn how to consolidate. Keep it, keep it simple, yeah. right? And and otherwise, uh, before you know, for the day before, you've got to start, you know, maybe reaching out to some friends and, and moving it off. Now that's the life of a college student in general. Yeah. You accumulate stuff and. There will be others who are arriving that need stuff. So you'll, you'll find a way. Um, now, maybe another angle would be this, um, you know, these experiences are so crucial for us to develop our own, you know, personal growth, professional growth. You open up links and you, you're developing friendships that are going to be lifelong that you'll know five, ten years from now. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, I wonder if you might talk a little bit about how it's changed you, if it has. I mean, if you, or if you're the same person, maybe just let us know that. But you think you've changed as a person having come here in your way of thinking, your values? Uh, what are maybe, I don't know, advice that you would give others who are considering studying abroad? Should they do it? Why? Or, or what are the kind of skills that you need to make it work? I'd say yes, absolutely. Study abroad if you have the chance. I think that it's given me a more open mind and in terms of being more flexible mm -hmm. and just letting things happen as they happen and um, being open to different, trying different things. Mm -hmm. And I knew I would be trying different things, but it's challenged me just in a really positive way. It feels good to, you know, it's been hard and sometimes and getting through that makes me like feel really good. And mm -hmm. it feels, reminds me that like, I can keep doing things. And yeah. And it's again that, that sort of getting out, I said that getting out of your comfort zone because wherever we are, we develop a certain routine, a certain way of doing things, and you get comfortable with that. Uh, you come to a new country, a new environment, and things are never quite the same, you know, whether it's putting a stamp on a postcard and trying to mail it or how to, you know, get the Wi Fi service going. Uh, <laughs> things just aren't done the same way as you might know. And there's often not an instruction manual that tells you where to go, who to ask. So you have to be resourceful. And you, you described, I guess, uh, the idea of open mindedness. And that's, really an important skill you develop because you realize people do things differently and it may be the same thing and it's not that your way is better or theirs is better but it's just different and that's something you have to come to accept uh, anything you could add i mean how it's changed you or what yeah. kind of skills you need definitely i mean it's been interesting like learning how to problem solve and get through struggles but also 
I'm a very like shy person um, naturally, and even like when I speak in English, everyone always tells me to speak louder or whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> having to speak in Spanish is even is that much more of a yeah. challenge. And so it's just made me a more confident person yeah. because I have to be, not necessarily because at first I want it to be, sure. but you have to really put yourself out there if mm -hmm. you want to survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think uh, we can take this in jest as well. I, I, I often note that you need a sense of humor. You need to be able to laugh at yourself mm -hmm. because you're going to make mistakes. You're going to do things that, you know, you may not know. You're you know, stumbling along the way or, or things that are just different and odd. And if you don't have the ability to laugh, to laugh at yourself, and I don't mean laugh and make fun of others, but just to, you know, kind of take it in stride. And then that's part of the open-mindedness that you described. And I wonder, you know, maybe pushing this a little farther, what are the kind of skills that are, again, needed? You, you mentioned open-mindedness, uh, maybe patience, maybe, uh, you know, uh, learning to listen carefully. Because often, it's, this is often maybe a criticism done of Americans, there's a sense of optimism or, you know, an attitude that, you know, we know how to do it and this is the answer. And Sometimes you have to have a certain level of humility and just step back, observe, listen, and not always have the answers, but just see that things are being done in their own organic way and go with that flow. Mm -hmm. uh, any, anything yeah. that, that comes to mind for you? Knowing uh, that things are going to get done and they might not be getting done how you want to do it, or you might not get to do it how you would usually do it, mm -hmm. but it's like it's going to work out and things will happen better than you think that they will. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think last semester we were talking about group projects oh. and things. And <laughs> like, you, if you're in a group of like Mexican students, usually they're really like back and they, you know, procrastinate. Of course we procrastinate too, but we give them for a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Extent. yeah. So things and, like that. And you know, th th this is so important because um, as you think about it, you are young leaders and whatever you want to do with your lives, you're going to be in increasingly working with people from different places, even if you're back in the U.S. So you know, the United States is a very diverse place. You've got populations and cultures and religions all over. And it's important to learn how to bring together people with different values. You don't always get to choose your groups or your partners or your workmates. And uh, that's, I think, an important skill. And, you know, as a professor, you know, we, we, we have to somehow figure out help you develop those skills, not just memorize things, and think, but even working in a group project, because ultimately, that's the nature of what you do in the real world. You know, you've got a team, you've got to figure out, and, and the challenge there is how to either motivate or, or get people to do the right thing. They may not be, you know, the main initiators of things, but maybe they've got other skill sets that you can somehow harness. Uh, it's a it's a challenge of, of cross-cultural management or intercultural management of, of how do you get others to do things, uh, and maybe they're on a different system of values, of, of time, you know, concepts, or what, what is urgent for them and things like that. Uh, so I think you're developing those skills just in your day-to-day -day life, just negotiating everything from, you know, going shopping, getting a, a bus ride, uh, uh, figuring out, you know, your work assignments. All these are good examples of that. Uh, and uh, I think ultimately the challenge that we all have is how do you, uh, you know, work, build from that and, and, and you know, uh, get rid of some of the bad habits you might have if you have any, but, uh, as you are evolving from this experience, it, it's going to bring out the best in you, but inevitably too, and there, there's this thing that we often talk about, the sort of culture shock, which even happens if you're on vacation, it can happen, but certainly more if you're going to a place to live. Uh, the honeymoon after two or three weeks ends, and then suddenly you're faced with some anxiety moment, like, why am I here, or how do I do that? Um, maybe just as we kind of uh, follow through with this, uh, you each of you have any examples of, of, of culture shock moment, uh, maybe you were lost, maybe you were frustrated, maybe you were at a sudden moment of anxiety that you, you just wanted to scream or cry and, and nothing like that? Um, <laughs> I'd say just sometimes in terms of transportation, that right. might be one thing that has been... Like a frustration? Of yeah, of, um, like with taxis and collectivos, things like that, there's a there will be a set price, and it's not always the price that you want, especially if you're white and American. Mm -hmm. um, and just, but knowing in advance that, um, like, you have, the, you kind of have a bit of power in helping to set the price, and yeah, and, and figuring out that maybe that's the first task when you get in. You got to clarify what yeah. is that price here and now. And that's a lesson. Again, I travel the world, and sometimes if you're in a taxi and you wait until the end, how much are you then? 
it can be very, very awkward. And, and, and there's a, you know, you're caught off guard. It's their turf. It's, you know, and, and you know, you're a young woman uh, as a foreign national here. So you want to learn to somehow clarify that right from the get-go. Arrive and how much is that? Even though it says eight there, maybe it's 10 and, you know, just figure that out, right? Any culture shock moments for you? I mean, again, you, you'd had experience coming before, but it's very different to come and live here, right? Right. Um, culture shock? I'm not sure. But I think just maybe adjusting to life in general. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, like I'm very shy. So like having to, like you said, with the taxes and setting prices and things, you have to be very direct because they see, they can tell that you're not yeah. from and, here. And, and if you're insecure and you don't know, mm -hmm. they'll think, ah, this is a sucker that exactly. I'm going to be able to take advantage of. And so you need to be more assertive in yeah, some yeah. ways, like it or not. It's just that's a skill you have to develop. To, Toughen up a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> no, very good. And you know, beyond that, let me as we kind of wind down our, our talk, I want to thank you for the opportunity to reflect on some of these things. Uh, um, you are now uh, you've been here many months, and 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 sort of well into your second semester, you've had opportunities now to get to know Mexico on a level, not just the school and classmates, but travel a little bit. Um, as you think about that, and and the takeaway you have, I mean, if you're uh, you know sharing uh, insights uh, and and impressions. Once you go back, back to your family, to your friends, what are some of the things, takeaways that you have from Mexico, things that you would want people to make sure they knew or understood or appreciated? Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, how would you describe Mexico, Mexican culture, Mexican society? Uh, because there are a lot of images and impressions we often get. Uh, just a few days ago, we celebrated the Oscars and the number one director was again, another Mexican director, uh, five of the last six. And I say that because, you know, there's this image and stereotype if you listen to Donald Trump and it's that Mexico sends us their worst, their rapists, their murders. And certainly there are some bad hombres and there's a lot of uh, at that, but there's also a steady flow of uh, workers that are an integral part of the U.S. economy. But more than that, Mexico also has, uh, you know, more positive elements, whether it's Hollywood film directors or even just, uh, I don't know, uh, people here who, you know, despite the animosity and tensions of U.S.-Mexico relations today, often still have a very positive image or impression of the U.S. A very high percentage of Mexicans have some family connection. Uh, they've got people living there or they've lived themselves there. So just back to this question, I mean, what are some of the things about Mexico you would share with your family and friends back in the U.S.? Um, I would just say there's just a widespread perception in America that Mexico is so insecure and it's so dangerous and everything. And of course it is in some places and whatever, but it's there are people that live here and that are happy here and that enjoy life here despite that just like in america we have our problems but it's a place where people live and it's it's not all what you see in the media and if you have the chance to go to places that aren't in or Scouts or whatever you should get out and like learn about that part of the culture too because it's not all about and like yeah. on spring break and yeah i think that's an often a, a a real i think unfortunate story many americans will only go and visit a hotel resort in mm -hmm. some popular place and okay that's fine you can have a good vacation but it, it's also a bubble it's not the real mexico uh, and it's not easy for everyone to go on vacation and be with the local community of course mm -hmm. uh, but there are opportunities and those who want to adventure and sort of see in general it's you would agree probably it's a very warm and friendly culture the people are interested they want to help and share uh, and yes you have to be vigilant and careful but in general most people's lives here are not you know lived under this you know constant <laughs> fear of, uh, of uh, i don't know violence and robbery uh it's just not that's not the reality now that aside yes you always want to be careful but you travel to new york city you want to also be looking if you're in dc in the wrong part of town you want to obviously know uh, what's going on what, what would you reflect, Haley? Any, any thoughts on, again, things that you would uh, share about your insights now into Mexico, Mexican culture, society? Yeah, I'd say the biggest two things that I want to tell people back home or anybody who just doesn't know much about Mexico is that, one, it is so incredibly diverse in ways that I never, that I did not know at all, like the different cultures throughout different regions mm -hmm. are, and indigenous versus there's just so many influences and the way that different regions interpret that or about that is has been so so fun to mm -hmm. learn and is so exciting mm -hmm. um so that's one of the things and then the other one is just the kindness 
Um, everybody just wants you to be happy. Every time I, the, every new person that I meet is so excited that I'm here and wants me to enjoy it and wants me to see how great this country is. Mm -hmm. And I do, and I do see yeah, yeah. how wonderful this country is and I love it so much. Yeah, there's a strong a sense of national pride. Mexicans mm -hmm. really do want you to experience there and their cuisine is different from the other town exactly. or state yeah. and, and you know this image of of, of of mexico as being the stereotype uh, it's a very diverse uh, very large place it's a rich country in many ways it's also poor there's inequality and justice but it's a very old country but it's also new it's it's yeah. got such a paradox of many different things and the regionalism i think is something that people don't appreciate as much again if you're just visiting a little resort town that's it's not quite the real <laughs> mexico uh, uh, the same can be said about anything, you know, visiting one place in any place. But um, I'm glad you were able to share again, and, and you've seen the, the, these experiences. Uh, it, it, it's true of any place you might go. You have to learn the local culture, the history, the context, how people relate themselves and to you. Uh, and I thank both of you for sharing these. Uh, we've had a good conversation. Uh, I'm glad that both of you are doing quite well, and you're now fully immersed, uh, in really, the, the, the tail end of your long stay here. You have a full academic year, now in the middle of your second semester. What I will just end by saying is that you'll never quite be the same person. You, you, you've opened up a, a world of both ideas, of feelings. You've built connections here that are gonna be lifelong. And, and you know, Mexico, even as you go away, you'll have a piece of it in your heart as, as you might any place you go. Uh, and in, I'm sure you'll come back for visits and, and to reconnect and, and experience what you've done here. Uh, so I wanna thank both of you, Brooke and Haley, a, a chance to understand your exciting opportunity, the, the study abroad experience. Uh, for our listeners, I'm, I'm grateful that you could join us today to hear these insights. Uh, Brooke uh, Barber joining us from Virginia, where she's a student at George Mason University. Uh, Haley Zeger from California, studying at the moment in Scotland. Well, not at the moment, she's here in Mexico, but <laughs> doing her studies in Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh, but both our students here at the University of the Americas in Cholula, Puebla. Uh, and I think it's fair to say they are uh, future generation that are going to be well-rounded uh, intercultural managers, cultural ambassadors themselves. But thank you both for joining me here on Global Connections and best of luck as you continue your studies here. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you.